doing great. How are you doing? Very well. I, you know, I, I just mentioned on the air, I, I'm dumbfounded. 34 books, including 14 New York Times bestsellers. You are, uh, you're not letting any uh, moss grow underneath your feet there. No, but I do a lot of the writing on airline when I'm on an airplane, so mm. and I'm very lucky I can get things done. Understanding Trump, your latest work, how long have you known Mr. Trump? Oh, I think probably 10 or 12 years. I actually first met him very briefly back in the 90s when I came up as speaker to speak to a New York uh, organization on, on economic growth. Uh, but I've known him very well since January of, uh, of 2015 when he asked Calista and me to come and sit down and, and uh, have breakfast with him and talk about running for president and what did we learn in 12 and what would it mean for him. And it was a fascinating conversation. He's a very unusual guy, very different than uh, what we're used to normally seeing in public life. And I think that uh, he has the potential to have an enormous impact on, on the country uh, and on uh, the future of, of what we're doing as a nation. Was that meal that you had the genesis for the book, Understanding Trump? <clears throat> well, I've, I've, no, not really. I mean, I, I was curious about Trump. I actually wrote, wrote a very small electronic book. I called Electing Trump, which was my newsletters, because I, I do two newsletters a week at GingrichProductions.com that are free. And so I'd, I'd watched him grow. I really began to get fascinated uh, after the first debate, which was Fox News, where he got in a big fight with uh, Megyn Kelly. Mm -hmm. And all of the elite groups, all the analysts uh, said, oh, he lost terribly. But when you went and looked at the uh, popular vote on places like Time Magazine or Red State or whatever, any of these websites, he was winning 60 or 70 percent of the vote out of 16 candidates. And I, that night I said to Calista, <clears throat> the gap between what the people are saying by the thousands on these websites and what the elites are saying is so enormous that I wonder what's going on. And then if you'll notice, uh, he once, once the, from the first time they record him in the national polls, he, he is number one except for one time when Dr. Carson passed him very briefly. But he was number one that entire period. Uh, and I looked at that and I thought to myself, you know, something's going on out there that I don't understand, and it's something that I don't think that the, the elites understand. And so then, beginning in August, September of 15, I began to really pay attention, and I began to realize that he's so different from anybody we've ever seen in politics that you, you cannot explain him. Uh, with normal politics. He's, he's really a remarkably different guy. This is uh, Newt Gingrich, who has written a book about the president. Understanding Trump is the title of that book. Do you think that Congress, because, and, and you were there, um, Congress tends to operate under one set of rules and guidelines because they are, in fact, politicians, whereas we have a president who is a businessman, first and foremost. Do you think it's going to take a long, long time for Congress and the president to get together and understand one another? I, yeah, I, I think – well, I think it, uh, we may see it happening sometime in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Trump is a pretty fast learner. He's got a lot of different things he's working on at once. Uh, but I, I think uh, the bigger thing for Trump is, is to focus on the American people. If, 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 if he would shift his tweets to being positive and would communicate his uh, infrastructure bill and what that's going to do for highways and for, for rivers and for, for uh, you know, for job creation – if he would focus on the right tax cuts to create jobs and why we need them, he could rally the American people, and the, the American people would then push Congress. That was the Reagan model. So the, Reagan didn't focus on Congress. He focused on the American people, and he knew that they would then focus on Congress. That's the classic example of bypassing the media and going right straight to the American people, isn't it? That's exactly right. Reagan was a genius. Reagan's the one who brought back... Uh, Franklin Donald Roosevelt had used occasional radio addresses. Reagan's the one who made him a weekly event because he wanted to get his message straight to the American people. Interesting. Um, if you had the ear of, and I'm sure you do communicate with him on a fairly regular basis, but if, with regard to the tweets, have you ever said to him, you know, Mr. President, you could serve yourself a lot better by doing exactly what you just mentioned, Newt Gingrich? Well, look, I have said to him, um, 10% less Trump would be 100% more effective. <laughs> and he, he stared at me and said, are you talking about my tweets? <laughs> you know, I mean, you've got to give the guy credit. Look, he, he has a style. It enabled him to become a billionaire many times over. 
It enabled him to beat 16 other Republicans for the nomination. It enabled him to beat Hillary Clinton in a billion-dollar campaign in the elite news media. So when you walk in to try to convince him to do something, he starts out with his idea, wait a second, <laughs> why am I listening to you? Uh, why aren't you listening to me? And it's, it's actually almost funny sometimes trying to sort through you know, how to get that across and how to get it to work right. Mr. Gingrich, thank you so much for the time today. I greatly appreciate it. Great to be with you. Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, 2012 presidential <laughs> candidate, is obviously with Fox News. His book is 